What's up fam? Welcome back to our lounge. Today's lesson, do no harm, but take no crap. Up first, through violence, you may murder the hater, but you do not murder the hate. Mother-in-law hit me. I've been with my husband for five years and we just recently got married in March. We have two toddlers, three and two. He comes from a big family and there were always gatherings every weekend. My husband, being the oldest of 10, has been the backbone, especially when he was divorced for eight years. My husband always helped family with bills, picked up the dinner checks, and took his siblings and mom on outings. When I met my husband in 2016, his family said they were happy he met me and that I made him happy. After our first year together and officially moving in with my now husband, things with his family, especially his mom, really changed. I found myself stepping on eggshells with mother-in-law and sister-in-law. They would get mad because I wouldn't invite them on our dates. And one time, one of them even confronted me on how he used to spend more time and take them to dinners before I came around. I found myself being a people pleaser and would not speak up for myself. I would get anxiety knowing that I'd be on bad terms and having to attend a family gathering because my husband didn't seem to take it serious. Fast forward to our wedding. We told them back in 2020 that we were thinking about a destination wedding and they were thrilled. They agreed to join us and I asked them to be bridesmaids again people pleasing so we could avoid the drama two weeks before the wedding they all decided they weren't going to go and even tried to brainwash me into having my wedding in our backyard the mom specifically told my husband the wedding will be here your sisters and i decided my husband got upset and told them it was our wedding and not theirs and if they didn't go it was on them mother-in-law ended up going to our wedding and was a nightmare but i kept my cool and ignored her and even took her coffee to her room on the day of on the wedding day Mother-in-law sat in her room as everyone ran around fixing the decor and tables and didn't speak to her after that because she kept avoiding me. When we got back, my husband kept his distance from his family since March, and I noticed my husband was pretty sad and disappointed that none of his siblings reached out to him on our wedding date, nor congratulated him. Last week, I told him he should go speak to his family, and he asked me to go with him just in case they had something to say about me or put words in my mouth. I was pretty reluctant, but I knew I didn't do anything wrong, and my husband had a point. We agreed not to argue, but as soon as we got there, mom started verbally abusing me and accused me of cheating. His older sister showed up and accused him of cheating on me, and then another sister showed up and decided to hit me, and I hit her back. My toddlers were with us, and my husband managed to get her away from me. As I was trying to get out of the house, mother-in-law kept holding me with a grin on her face because she wanted us to fight. My husband kept trying to hold sister-in-law back, and I was able to get out. As I got out, mother-in-law and sister-in-law tore my shirt apart from front, exposing my bra and breasts. Father-in-law and brother-in-law see me like this. Husband kept holding sister back, telling her the kids were there and to stop. During that time and trying to gather my kids, mother-in-law comes up to me and started pulling my hair and hitting my face. Husband and I decided to cut all ties. I feel so upset that this happened and my kids remember. I didn't deserve this and I feel sad that I didn't do more. Our first community reaction comes from Happy Cat Lady, 1982. Firstly, I am so sorry for you and your husband. His family are absolutely vile. Depending on what country you're in, you absolutely can report her even if it's a week later, but you need to tell your husband he needs to man up and make a statement and say what happened, seeing as it looks like your in-laws will lie through their teeth and stick together. The OP responds, yes, exactly, and as upset and sad that I am, I don't want to go through all that like you said, they will lie. I just hate that they did this to us, and it's been tough because I just want to put this behind us, but I'm so upset. Our next comment comes from Mikhail1371. I am so sorry your family had to go through this traumatic event. I sure hope you have filed a police report. Get this on the record as soon as possible. One more comment from Three Ring Shit Show. Please file a police report. There needs to be a record of this in case they escalate. Violence is never, ever an option. There's no way that type of behavior is okay and or acceptable. You have every right never to speak to those people again, OP. And after that, your husband should completely support and understand your wishes. At the same time, children shouldn't be exposed to that sort of behavior either. That type of behavior can have serious repercussions on children. Setting a clear boundary is super important right now, OP. I'm so sorry this has happened to you. I hope you're okay and please stay safe moving forward. Tell us your thoughts in the comments below. Up next, do not let the behavior of others destroy your peace. Are we wrong here? Insane in-laws? I am married and have two children from a previous relationship. We have a great life and are finally getting our rainbow baby after a few miscarriages. 
The problem lies with my in-laws. Before my husband met me, they relied on him a lot financially. He is not the only child. His parents live well beyond their means. When they can't come up with the rest of the money for their bills, they expect my husband to cough up the money. My mother-in-law is the definition of monster-in-law, with my father-in-law enabling her behavior. She spends all the money that they have at times racking up one to $2,000 worth of her parking tickets. No, I'm not exaggerating. Racking up thousands in debt, expecting my husband to pay it, and a whole lot more I could write a book. To this day, some of the stories seem unbelievable to me. His parents resent me because they blame me for our move out of state. We were only an hour away, by the way. When we bought our house, all his mother could say was she was upset we didn't use her friend who was a realtor so she can get some commission out of it. His dad complained that we moved too far, yet drives to places two hours away with no issue. His mother's comments have become more and more toxic and aggressive towards me, and I can't take it. His father responds, that's just how she is. You just have to accept it. My husband has spoken to them, but it seems they don't get it. Everything has come to a head when two family members approached me because they felt disgusted by some of the comments my in-laws were saying. My pregnancy is high risk, so I needed to leave my job. However, before leaving my job, I had savings that covered me for about two years of my expenses. They called me a gold digger and a manipulator. They said I got pregnant on purpose just so I can take all of their son's money. His dad said I don't understand why he, my husband, loves my kids so much they shouldn't be his financial burden and she, me, devised all this plan to take all of my son's money. No, my husband is not rich. We are just both hardworking people. To be honest, I've just had it with them, especially once they put my children into it. I could care less about what they say about me, but my children is a line I don't allow anyone to cross. My husband has agreed to go low contact to no contact and wants to disinvite them from the baby shower. I also would like to reject or return any gifts my in-laws have purchased for our baby. Most of the family agree with us, but some say we're being too harsh. Are we wrong here? Ask a question, you're going to get some answers from the community. NYCTS9719 says, No, you're not in the wrong at all. This is outrageous. Ray Ray6672 adds, That would be a hard yes on disinviting them and returning the things they bought. All they care about is the fact that he isn't giving them money. For them to hate on your children is vile and disgusting. They are the ones who have taken it too far. Time for boundaries and consequences. No visits, period before or after birth. If they can hate on your pregnancy, then they have forfeited any goodwill to meet your baby. Definitely not coming to baby shower. No calls with you and no FaceTime when baby arrives. When you do decide to see them, hard no on holding and touching your child. No pictures, zero on anything related to you or your children. Definitely cut off financially. You need to focus on you and your children and giving birth. He needs to call them. I know what you did about my wife and children. You will not disrespect her and my family. You are no longer welcome in my, our home. Do not contact me. I will contact you when I am ready. You need to apologize to my wife and our family. You are not the people I thought you were. You need to work out your own finances because the Bank of Sun has now closed your account. Next comment from Comfortable Gas 798 You are not wrong. If you dig a hole and put them in it, you would still not be wrong. They are major gaslighters, pulling whatever smoke out of their butts to make you the bad guy so long as your dear husband doesn't fall for it and sees that they are just spewing crap and has your back, you should be good. You're not wrong at all, OP. There's no reason you should subject yourself to such behavior and negativity. They've chosen their fate for themselves. Setting clear boundaries is the best interest for you and your baby, especially since this is a high-risk pregnancy. You don't need people like them around. A rainbow baby is a beautiful thing and something that should be celebrated and not overshadowed by their dark clouds. Lastly, don't fire unless fired upon, but if they mean to have a war, let it begin here. Over time and after a few callouts, mother-in-law seems to finally be getting it. I mean, she still occasionally guilt trips, she still oversteps boundaries, she still thinks she's more important than she is, but is starting to realize that dear husband and I just don't give an F like we used to. With the advice of this sub, I've deleted several of my posts and used ghost accounts for most things. Mother-in-law is finally realizing she has no control over us. We used to be under her financial control, responsive to her manipulation, reactive to any request she made, bought her expensive gifts. She would send us links to $200 perfume and told us to buy it for her because she's done so much for us. She's now living a thousand miles away, so no surprise visits or requests to babysit despite not being able to even walk on her own. If she throws a temper tantrum, we ignore it. She escalates, we ignore it. If she texts at 4 a.m., we have her muted. 
When she guilt trips, we ignore it. She cries loudly, we ignore it. She texts, guess I'm losing my son. We ignore it. She's on an info diet and finds things out through brother-in-law, which we're okay with. When she asks us about it, we gray rock. She cries, we ignore it. She no longer texts me trying to get info about dear husband or our little one. She realizes I won't budge and doesn't get anything from me. She boundary stomped our entire wedding planning and made the whole thing about her and invited all of her childhood friends despite not contributing a dime. So we canceled the wedding and eloped, told her afterward. She'll occasionally insult me to brother-in-law, who tells dear husband, who dresses it with a simple, you called OP a blank, don't. Cue the crying and denial, the non-apology, and therefore the timeout. She continues to post about my son on Facebook saying, he's the love of my life, which is creepy. We ignore it because people are starting to wonder why they don't have any recent pictures together. I'm free for the most part, y'all. There's occasional drama, but I haven't had to deal with her cornering me just to call me ugly or fat or tell me my hair looks bad. No manipulation, kissing my baby without permission, showing up uninvited, begging me for money, begging for gifts, emotional blackmail, etc. We refuse her gifts too because if we accept them, we'll owe her. Dear husband put in most of the work as he was very much in the fog when I met him but we would have never gotten here without the helpfulness of this sub. The best advice I ever received from this sub, state your expectations and boundaries clearly and firmly. Do no harm, but take no crap. I'll be back with something new next week. I'm sure because dear husband hasn't cut her off completely, but this woman will never call me a witch and then ask me for money in the same breath ever again. So there's that. While we don't expect her to ever be completely respectful, as she's even rude to wait staff, all of these incidents have slowed and dear husband is no longer a puppet of hers. Editing to add that her escalations occasionally include a new, damning physical health diagnosis or mental health emergency. Here's how I responded to either. Physical health. I'm so sorry to hear that. Please stay proactive. Your doctor will tell you everything you need to do. Mental health. Do you want to call 911 on yourself or should we? And that's the last we hear about it. Community reacts this way. First from P false P flag. Do no harm, take no crap. That belongs on a t-shirt. Next up from Too Fat C. She boundary stomped our entire wedding planning and made the whole thing about her and invited all of her childhood friends despite not contributing a dime. So we canceled the wedding and eloped and told her afterward. Holy cow, pure rock star genius move. And you told her afterward. Hilarious. Good work, you two. Next chime in from Comfortable Gas 798. I'm saving your post so I can relay this very important info to other OPs who need to hear it. This is a very important lesson. So many OPs want to send texts and emails to confront their abusers face to face to reason with folks who are unreasonable. It rarely works and the abusers turn themselves into victims and only give the abusers more ammo to fire back at you. Ignoring the abuser, essentially enforcing timeouts of increasing length, is the best consequence you can give them. The only way to win is not to play. Bravo, OP, you have won. The OP responds, very true, and I used to do that. Once I figured out what she'll use against me, I tried confronting her. I did my best to use facts and supportive evidence when she tried to gaslight me. It never worked. She just got louder and meaner. So I stopped playing and started winning. It's the only way. Woohoo! I'm so proud of you, OP. This is an absolute win. More often than not, these types of people just want to stir up drama and create havoc. If you don't buy into it and don't play into their games, they don't have any power over you. Congratulations for coming out alive. You're an absolute inspiration for us all. Here's to happily ever after. Tell us your success stories below. And as always, thank you for joining us today on Our Lounge. Before you go, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way, you won't miss out on any of our videos. If you have feedback on today's content, please let us know in the comments below. See you next time.